We are all familiar with the famous sightseeing places in Paris such as the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, or the Moulin Rouge. But besides these famous places, did you know there is another side of Paris that is mostly hidden for the public? Feared by many and said to be haunted, this is one of the spookiest locations on Earth. And in this documentary, we will explain you a bit more about it. Welcome to the Glim. Deep underneath the city, there is another mysterious world that has fascinated and frightened people for centuries. We are talking about the Paris Catacombs, a massive labyrinth network of tunnels and chambers filled with bones of millions of Parisians who died long ago. Originally the catacombs were created in the late 18th century, in this time the city's graveyards were overflowing. The stench and also the risk of disease outbreaks were becoming more and more real. So the catacombs were a solution to these problems and would prevent the overcrowding of the Parisian cemeteries. In 1785, the city began the process of moving the bodies from some of the largest cemeteries in Paris, for instance Les Innocents, which was located in the heart of Paris and became a major health risk. The bodies were moved at night, this had to do with the pact that the transportation of human remains was a disturbing process that could be upsetting to the citizens. It also helped to maintain public order, because at this time, there was a great deal of social unrest in France, and the authorities were keen to avoid any attention or criticism. When you move into these tunnels, you will be stunned by the intriguing patterns and designs of these catacombs. Most of the walls are decorated with human bones, arranged in patterns and shapes that are artistic as well as very morbid. A very notable pattern found in here is the use of femurs and skulls to create crosses, which can be found all throughout the network of tunnels. Also you will see a lot of arches and columns, which give the catacombs a almost cathedral-like feel. Besides these common designs, you can also find a heart made of skulls, a skull pyramid and even an entire room that is decorated with skulls that are arranged in very interesting patterns. The Parisians in this era sure had a lot of creativity in them. But it's worth mentioning that not everything in the catacombs was designed intentionally. A lot of bones were just stacked haphazardly, and over time they created interesting shapes and patterns as they settled into the tunnels. Regardless of the origins of these patterns, it is a haunting and surely fascinating aspect of the history here. Nowadays you can explore a small section of the network, but the vast majority of these tunnels remain forbidden to the public. A lot of people that went into the tunnels report feeling a sense of unease and discomfort, and that it feels like as if the skulls are watching them. It is not weird that a big part of this system is closed for the public, as it is such a huge maze-like network of tunnels, that you could easily get lost. It consists of over 200 miles of tunnel with loads of the main tunnels branching off into smaller passageways and hidden chambers. The creation of maps of the Paris catacombs is a fascinating story in itself. The maze-like network of tunnels made it difficult to navigate, and there were few accurate maps available. Over the years, many people had become lost in the catacombs, some of whom never found their way out. Because of this, in the early 19th century there was an attempt to create an accurate map of the catacombs. This was done by a man named Francois Arago and his team. He was a physicist and astronomer, but he was also very interested in the underground tunnels beneath Paris. His team consisted of surveyors, cartographers and engineers. Armed with measuring instruments, candles and a determination to create the first map of the maze. It was a challenging and dangerous process. They had to contend with unstable walls, flooded tunnels and the risk of getting lost themselves. They were noting down every detail such as the height, width and depth of the tunnels as well as the distances between different points of recognizable landmarks such as staircases, wells and crypts. Despite the danger and the difficulties they managed to pull it off. 
After several years of work they produced the first accurate map of the tunnel system. An impressive feat of cartography which allowed people to explore the catacombs with more safety and confidence. Nowadays the map is considered a historical treasure, and it remains an important artifact of the fascinating history of the Paris catacombs. Originally, the catacombs were created as a network of limestone quarries. Limestone was mined here to provide building material for the city, which you can still find a lot all over Paris. Over time, these tunnels became more complex and long, when eventually they were repurposed as a mass burial site. When they made this decision, they had to even expand more, and reconfigure the tunnels to accommodate the influx of millions of bodies. New tunnels and chambers were added, and some others were filled in. This led to the creation of the complex network of tunnels that exists today. Navigating the catacombs can be a difficult task, even the most experienced explorers have had difficulties navigating here, as the tunnels are dark and narrow, and most of the tunnels are completely unmarked. It's a common thing for visitors to accidentally wander off the main paths and to get lost. Even though it is very dangerous to go into the depths of the catacombs, and it is advised to stay on the designated paths, a lot of people want to go further and deeper. People are drawn to the mystery and the otherworldly atmosphere. With only a dim of flashlight to guide the way, a chilling air, and a silence only broken by the sounds of footsteps echoing off the walls, many fanatics love to visit this place. Some visitors have reported experiencing supernatural occurrences, such as hearing disembodied voices or feeling cold hands on their shoulders. Others claim to have seen shadows or blurred lights moving through the passageways. Over the years, the catacombs have become the subject of a lot of legends and tales, which of course, contribute to the mysterious aura of the place. One famous example is the legend of the cataphiles, a group of urban explorers who have been navigating the tunnels for decades. They are drawn to the catacombs for a variety of reasons, including the historical significance, the eerie atmosphere and the thrill of exploration. They are said to have their own network of tunnels and chambers and it is said that they use the place for secret meetings and parties. They also engage in various forms of artistic and cultural expression in the tunnels. For instance, some have created huge murals and graffiti art on the walls, while others have used it for underground concerts, film screenings and cultural events. While generally the cataphiles are viewed as a harmless subculture, over the years there have been instances of vandalism and criminal activity in the catacombs. As a result, the authorities have intervened, but still many cataphiles continue to explore the tunnels in secret. Another famous legend here, is the legend of Philibert Apert. A young man who got lost in 1793, and never was seen again. The legend says that Philibert's ghost still haunts the catacombs, and that sometimes in the echoes, you can hear his voice calling out for help. Besides the ghost of Philibert Espert, it is said that numerous ghosts are haunting the tunnels. For instance the Phantom Drummer. There have been many reports of visitors that have heard the sounds of a drummer while in the tunnels, and according to the legend, the drummer was a soldier that became lost in the tunnels and never found his way out. They say he is beating his drums as he wanders in search of an escape route. Some skeptics believe that the sounds are nothing more than a natural phenomenon, for instance the result of an echo. Regardless, the story of the drummer adds to the mystery of the tunnels and continues to captivate the imagination of visitors and even locals. Another noteworthy ghost story of the catacombs is the story of the Lady in White. According to the legend, she was a young woman from the French nobility who became lost in the tunnels and died of exposure. Numerous visitors have seen her spirit wandering around, and most describe her as a beautiful young woman, dressed in a flowing white gown, with long hair and an ethereal glow. 
People have reported feeling a strange sensation of being pulled towards her, as if she is trying to lead them deeper into the labyrinth. Aside from the ghosts I mentioned, there is a huge variety of other ghosts to be found under Paris, from the shadow people who are said to be the ghosts of the people that died here, to child ghosts and monk spirits. These tunnels are one of the most haunted and scary places on earth. Even though the catacombs have an eerie and dangerous reputation, they are also a powerful reminder of our own mortality, and they even have been the subject of several works of art such as the movie As Above, So Below, and for instance the video game Amnesia, The Dark Descent. While the Paris Catacomb is probably the most famous underground burial site, there are a couple of other similar catacombs and underground tombs scattered throughout the world. For instance in Italy we have the Capuchin Catacombs of Palermo, located beneath the Capuchin Monastery in Palermo. These catacombs contain thousands of mummified bodies, of which many are dressed in the finest clothes and are set up in lifelike poses. These catacombs date back to the 16th century, and just like the catacombs in Paris, were also used as a burial site. But this one was only designated for the wealthy residents. Then we also have the catacombs of Qam el Shokafa, located in the city of Alexandria, in Egypt. These catacombs were discovered in the early 20th century and they are believed to date back to the 2nd century AD. In these catacombs you can find a blend of Egyptian, Greek and Roman architecture styles. These are just a couple examples of the many catacombs and underground tombs that you can find throughout the world. And although each of these sites has their own unique history and cultural significance, they all share the common theme of using underground spaces as a final resting place for the dead. But are they really resting in peace? Or are the spirits of the dead still haunting these places? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this documentary, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more.